So in my game Static Mag, a lot of the game's mechanics revolve around pulling things towards yourself. The main mechanic of course, being able to pull weapons out of the hands of enemies and using them to avenge your uncle's death after he was involved in a pizza delivery that went south. The story is still a work in progress. Since the game pretty much revolves around the magnet, I want to ring out all the mechanics I can to keep the game engaging throughout its 17 minute playtime. So I thought what if instead of having everything go to the player, the player goes to it. With this idea I prototyped a new enemy that I have been calling Olive. Unlike all the other enemies, Olive does not move, but instead just sits there with a laser beam and follows the player. It's basically just the 3D version of the laser eye from Super Meat Boy, the best platformer game of all time, don't at me. However, when using the magnet on it, you get locked into an animation where you pull yourself towards it and punch it out of the air. While this mechanic makes you feel cool, it also offers a new way to traverse levels by allowing the player to clear gaps that otherwise are impossible. Also, it's a lot easier to program an enemy that doesn't move, and after spending so much time focusing on how and where enemies move to, this is a nice break. Like all other enemies in my game, Olive's AI consists of several states and is pretty dumb, but I'll still give you a rundown on what exactly it does. It first starts in its normal state, where it just rotates to face the player. Once gaining line of sight to the player, it enters its charging state, telegraphing to the player it's about to attack, and perhaps they should try to break line of sight. It then enters its attack state, where it shoots the laser while rotating slightly slower than the player's run speed, so they can escape the beam if they get caught by it. Once done attacking, it switches back to its normal state where the laser is on cooldown. There is also a stun state that gets triggered whenever the player pulls towards them. This stops any current or future attacks so the player doesn't take unfair damage while being locked into the sequence. I also worked on zip lines, which have been in the game for a long time, but they broke during a code refactor a while back, and I just never got around to fixing them. So I thought it was about time to revisit them, and the original code for them wasn't very good, so I just decided to start over. I first wrote a script that generates a cylinder in between the two poles while also fitting a box collider to it so the player can interact with it. When the player gets close enough to the zipline, they will get a prompt to press the E key, which stands for interact. After pressing the key, the player will then lerp to the closest point on the zipline and have their camera animate to the direction they're moving. Since the ziplines are bi-directional, whichever direction the player is closest to facing when they first get on the zipline is the direction they'll move in. However, when starting near either end of the zipline, the player will always move in the direction towards the center because it doesn't make sense to have them ride it for a fraction of a second. I'm also assuming that when a player hops on one end of the zipline, they intend to ride towards the opposite end, so this helps move them in the correct direction no matter their initial orientation. I also added support for vertical zip lines, where the only difference between them and horizontal ones is that the player rides on the side of it instead of underneath it. I made a couple new levels to test both the new enemy and zip lines to make sure they fit into the existing game loop. I ended up being pretty happy with both, plus my dad said they're cool, so I'll be keeping them in the game. Their art of course is not finalized, Wills has been focusing on environmental art and hasn't had the time to make proper models for Olive or the zipline. I offered to try to make them myself, but for some reason he didn't think that was a good use of my time. Then right before making this video, I thought it would be cool to have a tool that could record the game's state while I played it, and then be able to play it back like a 3D movie using Unity's timeline. Then you could use Cinemachine to get cool shots and have a nice way of gathering footage for videos. As far as I know, there are no public tools capable of doing this, so I decided to create it myself. I thought I could get it done in like two days, but it actually took two weeks. It's not very user friendly and is pretty basic because it only conforms to my needs, so it's not open source at the moment, so sorry if anyone was interested in using it. I wanted to get this video out sooner, but I got sucked into the side quest for a while. I also started playing Elden Ring for my first time. Does anyone know where I get the Glitstone key?